Hi guys, welcome back to the Tech Chat. Now the Microsoft Lumia 950 and 950 XL are the best Windows phones you can buy right now. Quad HD screens, multi-core processors, fantastic 20 megapixel cameras that shoot 4K video, as well as all that. They support micro SD cards and have re removable batteries, so you don't always have to have a charger with you. But most importantly, they run the latest Windows 10 operating system. This is the first unified version of Windows that makes these phones more like a proper PC than ever before, especially with support for Continuum, but we'll talk about that a bit later. So it's great to see that we finally have high-end flagship Windows smartphones that can give the best Android and Apple phones a run for their money. But let me tell you why I don't think most of us should be rushing out and buying one anytime soon. Now I'm reviewing the Lumia 950 and the 950 XL together, as aside from the size difference and minor cosmetic changes to the rear camera and the volume and power buttons on the side, they're essentially the same phone. The only other significant difference between these two is that the XL features a slightly faster Snapdragon 810 processor that's compared with the Snapdragon 808 in the Lumia 950, but in my tests in both benchmarks and reality there really isn't a great deal of difference in performance. The only one I noticed was when I uh, loaded Asphalt 8 Airborne, one of the more intensive games on the Windows App Store, and the XL loaded about a second faster than the 950, so there's not really much difference in the real world, and so it basically comes down to the form factor, the size, 5.2 versus 5.7, or for which one you're going to buy or prefer. While the specs and the price suggest these are premium phones, I think the materials and the build quality and the design make it feel a little bit cheaper. I actually do think they look quite smart, especially in black, the other option is white, because it has the silver finish around the camera, even though the plastic body feels a bit cheap, a bit like the Nexus 5X. It's nowhere near as premium as the iPhone 6S or Galaxy S6, for example, but the good news is that Microsoft has opted for function over form. And this plastic body, while not the most premium, not only keeps the weight down, but removing it reveals the micro SD card and removable battery. On the base of the phone is a new USB Type-C port, which supports faster data transfer and charging, and is also completely reversible, so no more fumbling around trying to get the plug in last thing at night. On the back is the new 20 megapixel pure view camera, which is flanked by a triple LED flash on one side and a speaker on the other. In terms of size, even though the XL has a half an inch bigger screen than the normal 950, it's not actually that much bigger. It's 0.1 millimeters thinner even, and only 15 grams heavier than the 950, which makes it surprisingly light given the screen size. The other benefit is the XL has a much better screen to body ratio at 74%, that compares to 69% on the standard 950, so it's relatively more compact. It is definitely still a two-handed device, though it's not as portable as the Lumia 950, so uh, the XL is definitely still a phablet, definitely still two-handed, so you may want to consider that when you you're choosing between them if you're looking to buy one of these phones. Fortunately the plastic back is actually a bit textured, it's a bit rubbery to it, so it's grippable so it's a lot less slippery than say the iPhone 6S Plus and less likely to fall out of your hand. So the Lumia 950s are available in black or white and while they may not feel the most premium I think it actually looks quite smart, quite professional and it has the added functionality of a removable and replaceable back cover. Now the screens are protected by Gorilla Glass 4, but they both feature the same beautiful AMOLED Quad HD display. The 5.2 inch Lumia 950 is therefore slightly sharper with 565 pixels per inch that compares to 518 on the 5.7 inch XL. The blacks are deep, the whites are rich, and it has good viewing angles, although there is a slight green tint when viewing them from an acute angle. Overall it's a really nice display, the colours aren't as vibrant as the Galaxy S6 or technically accurate as the iPhone 6S Plus for example, but the AMOLED screen still looks great. The maximum bright Brightness is pretty disappointing though at about 328 nits, that compares to about 590 on the iPhone 6 Plus. But here's a trick, if you set the brightness to auto, when the phone detects it's in a bright environment, like if you're in sunlight outside, it boosts it way up to 628 nits, which is incredibly bright, so keep it on auto. So how fast are these new high-end Windows phones? Well, it's hard to say. On paper, the Snapdragon 808 and 810 processors are the best you can get in a 2015 phone, even if you will be seeing the next-gen 820 chips in phones from February or March. It's also worth noting that the XL uses the 2.1 version of the Snapdragon 810 chip, which supposedly doesn't have any of the over overheating issues that the earlier models suffered from. The plastic back cover does get a little bit warm if it's charging or downloading large files or playing intensive games, but I wouldn't describe it as hot or anything or uncomfortable, it's just a bit warm. But even with high-end processors and 3GB of RAM, it's actually difficult to see the benefit of all this power. Windows phones have always felt pretty fast, even on the earlier Windows 7 and Windows 8 phones. The live tiles, home screens ran smooth and felt responsive. So even though these phones are pushing Quad HD resolution displays, which does require more power, it's sometimes hard to tell just how fast they are in everyday use. 
Interestingly, the XR model did seem a bit quicker when swiping left to reveal the app list. So to really challenge the phones and get a better idea of the performance, I wanted to test them against some graphically intensive games. Unfortunately, there's not actually that many available on the Windows Store. That's something we'll talk about that later. But there's Real Racing 2, but not Real Racing 3, for example, which is available on iOS and Android. So I settled on Asphalt 8 Airborne, which both phones played flawlessly. To be fair, though, the XL did load it uh, about a second faster than the normal 950, so that's a little bit of the benefit of the faster Snapdragon 810, but in the actual gameplay there was no difference in quality or frame rate. So these are of course the most powerful Windows phones you can buy, so of course they can handle anything you throw at it from the Windows Store. The problem though is that the raw performance doesn't really translate into a smooth user experience throughout the phone. Yes, the live tiles home screen is fast and smooth, but there's random pauses, little hiccups when swiping between menus and scrolling uh, through the App Store, for example, really feels a bit slow and a bit sluggish, and it feels like it has to catch up sometimes. Basically, it just doesn't feel as polished as I thought it would for a Windows 10 device. So while it may not be quite as smooth as I'd like, you can't deny the Windows phone live tiles home screen is so much nicer and better than iOS or Android phones. Yes, you can get widgets on Android, but the live tiles interface, which we used to call Metro, is great for seeing a slideshow of your pictures through the uh, Photos app, looking at headline news, recent messages, emails, and missed calls. It's genuinely useful to see at a glance who just phoned you or what the most recent text message says without even opening the app. Each tile has three sizes, so you can play around with the layout and prioritize apps that are important to you. You can even personalize it by changing the background color, the tile color, and the opacity, as well as adding an extra column on the 950XL by enabling the Show More Tiles option to make use of the bigger screen. Everything else though is pretty similar to iOS and Android. You swipe down for the notification and settings menu, swipe left to reveal the app drawer, or list in this case, tap the search button to activate Cortana, hold the back button to view previous apps, and hold the Windows button to activate the one-handed mode, which is obviously a bit more useful on the XL. Cortana is just as useful as Siri or Google Voice, I think. You can ask for the time, the weather, set reminders, text and call people, standard stuff. Uh, I'll be looking at Cortana more closely in an upcoming Siri versus Google versus Cortana video, so stay tuned for that on my channel. Another feature I'll talk a bit more about in a future video is Windows Continuum, which turns your phone into a proper PC. Both the 950 and the 950XL support it, you just need the optional Microsoft Display Dock. Plug it in via the Type-C USB port, connect a mouse, keyboard, and a monitor, and it basically turns the phone into a makeshift PC which can run full-size Windows 10 apps. It is a little bit limited though at the moment, it only runs first-party Microsoft apps like Edge, Office, and Mail for now, but it is a promising start. Another pretty cool feature is what they call Windows Hello. The 950 phones don't have fingerprint readers, but they do have iris scanning technology, which Microsoft call Windows Hello. It uses the front camera to register and scan your eye to unlock the phone. It is currently in beta and you do need a backup pin, but it works reasonably well. The phone needs to be about a foot away from your face, and so if you do it in public, it looks a bit like you're taking a selfie or something. It works well in low light too, as it uses a near infrared camera to track your eye. It's all pretty cool, but if I'm honest, it's not something I'd use regularly. It quickly gets annoying having to bring up the phone to your face every time you want to unlock it, so I think I might stick with the PIM. The biggest problem with the 950 and 950XL is the Windows Phone Store. This has always been an issue, and I think it's one of the main reasons most of us haven't really given Windows phones a chance yet. I wanted to see if the App Store really is all that bad, so I made a video dedicated to finding out if I could get most of the core apps I use every day on my Galaxy S6 and my iPhone Success on my Windows Phone. You can find a link to that video on my channel or by clicking one of the YouTube card things somewhere, but long story short, it's still not good enough. Yes, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, Spotify, Netflix, Kindle and Dropbox, but Instagram is still in beta, there's no Chrome browser, no Google Maps or Amazon Prime, and there aren't even that many good modern games. Looking at the numbers alone, the Windows Store only has about 20% of the number of apps that the Google Play Store does. Let's talk about something a bit more positive. Let's talk about the fantastic new PureView camera. It's really, really good. 20 megapixels, f1.9 aperture, optical image stabilization, triple LED flash, 4K 30 video and full manual control of the ISO, white balance, brightness and shutter speed. It's really quick too, both launching the camera app and taking a picture, so I'm really really impressed with the camera. I did find the 950 struggle to focus from time to time, but when it got it right the pictures were stunning. Good exposure, natural colours, lots of detail. Overall it takes excellent photos, although it's worth noting that the sensor is 4x3, so if you want to take 16x9 widescreen photos you'll have to drop down to 16 megapixels, but that's still plenty. Some more prosumer photographers will be disappointed by the lack of raw support, but if you've seen adverts for the new iPhone 6s and loved the look of the live photos feature, this basically has that. The capture living image setting is enabled by default and like the iPhone, records a second or two of video before ending on the high resolution still. It's pretty cool and gives a bit of context to the photo, although you can always turn it off if you find it annoying. 
Even the front-facing 5 megapixel camera, which takes pretty decent pictures and solid 1080p video, can produce living images as well. As for video, the phones support up to 1080p 60 or 4K 30, which is great and generally quality is excellent. Recorded sound is very good as well, thanks to the four microphones on the phone. Detail is good and there's very little noise even in darker conditions. The bottom line is the 950 and the 950 XL are two of the best camera phones you can buy right now, even if the icons in the app's UI are a little bit small and fiddly. Now let's move on to battery life. I'll start with the good news, it's removable, so you can always buy an extra battery and swap them out if you're running low and don't have a charger to hand. The not so good news is that the battery on both the 950 and the 950 XL is pretty mediocre. The XL has about a 10% larger battery, which despite having a larger screen and more powerful processor does translate to a slightly better battery life by an extra hour or two. Microsoft claim you'll get 19 hours on 3G and 300 hours of standby life. Generally, both phones lasted about a full day for me, with about 20% left on the 950 by 10 pm and about 25% on the XL. Fortunately, both phones feature fast charging, so you can charge it from about 10 to 50% in under half an hour, as well as supporting wireless QI or Qi charging. You can also make the phones last a bit longer by enabling the battery saver mode and manually lowering the brightness. On the whole, battery life is pretty solid, it's average, and similarly mediocre is the sound quality, unfortunately. The single speaker on the back beside the camera can get very loud, but audio quality isn't particularly impressive. It's fine for the odd YouTube video or loudspeaker call, but it sounds tinny and lacks any depth. Fortunately though, call quality is pretty good. I didn't have any issues with reception or signal loss either. So let's wrap this review up. The Lumia 950 and the 950XL are the best Windows phones you can buy right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should go out and buy one. If you're unsure, ask yourself these questions. One, do you want a Windows phone? If yes, do you want a high-end Windows phone? If also yes, then you may want to consider one of these. All you then have to do is choose whether you prefer the normal 5.2 inch 950 or the larger, slightly more expensive and a bit faster 5.7 inch XL model. I actually really like these phones. The camera is excellent. Windows phone has features I'd love to see on iOS and Android and it may not feel like the most premium phone, but I think it looks pretty good and quite smart generally. Performance is also solid, although not consistent throughout. However, there are still big gaps in the App Store and Windows 10 software isn't as smooth or as polished throughout as I would have liked. So if you're a big Windows fan, I definitely do recommend the Lumia 950s. And out of the two, I think I'd personally opt for the XL model. If you're not particularly bothered about Windows, I think there are better phones out there on the market. So I hope you found this review helpful. Thank you very much for watching. And please do like and subscribe. And of course, let me know what you think of the 950 in the comments below.